Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me, your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 485, that's 485 of the Agassino Zynga show, how you doing, how you're feeling, great, amazing, good to hear wherever this may find you if it's your first time watching the show via youtube you know what to do smash like hit subscribe and of course leave me a comment down below with your thoughts feelings and suggestions i'd love to hear what you're saying and if you listen via the podcast app please share and obviously leave me a five star review that obviously help in terms of pushing up the algorithm and if you want to support with the patreon you know support the podcast you get access to all the bonus content and send some extra coins my way, then please do so at patreon.com for just Agostino. But it is one dollar equivalent of one pound per month. You get access to all my bonus content only available through patreon.com for just Agostino. You can find a link in the description, click on there, get involved. Only one pound, don't delay, get involved in there today, today, today. <sighs> Anyways, how you doing? How you feeling? Hope this finds you well wherever you may be. It's pretty fine over on my side of things. It's sometime in the evening on Wednesday chopping it up doing the best that i can with you guys i've got myself a little iced coffee here that i'm sipping on in order to keep me awake because it's been a long day um a very fruitful day a very productive one but still a long one and like a psycho that i am i tend to indulge in the old um, cold brew coffees in the evening to wind down which is really not the right way to wind down which makes me would then then I'm, I'm one of those kind of people that's surprised when i can't go to sleep and i'm up until like two or something and i have to go gym in the morning and work in the morning it's like ah it's like yeah maybe don't drink the cold brews you know at 9 p.m or whatever it may be do you know what i mean maybe like sack those off for later on in the evening or later on the next day but hey you know i love to live on the edge i love to live on the edge what's been going on um i was thinking the other day you know what right it's been quite this is a weird statement to say but hasn't it been oddly refreshing to have the whole entire world completely forget about covid for the last few days and just focus on what's happening in afghanistan of course don't get me wrong most of the stuff people are talking about especially in the west is not is of any is not of any really relevance it's not going to change anything um it's a completely different situation over there now than it was maybe in the past there's not really much we can do ourselves in order to enact any sort of change obviously for some of the refugees who are fleeing afghanistan and coming over um to other parts in the west if we are in a position where we can facilitate that transition call cool, wherever it may be but for the majority of us we're just watching from afar and hoping no one gets too hurt um but it's been quite refreshing i have to be honest to have um not have the constant drone and the constant macabre numbers and graphs and charts and models of just how bad it is out there during covid but you know and then yeah because those graphs and models obviously kind of remind you how bad things are but then for whatever reason most of the country or especially here in the uk is completely open and it just doesn't marry up well with you right psychologically wise you're like hold on this doesn't really make much sense why are we open but the numbers are really bad like it doesn't really add up to it. and then all these other places around the world are going back to lockdown so you're thinking to yourself you know what is that's going to come to our doorstep you're hearing cases you know of a couple of cases in australia is basically leading to their entire country locking down i think it might be new zealand too obviously parts of america considering going back in lockdown in some way new york has enforced this really strict way where you basically have to have a covid passport in order to go anywhere and do anything in that city so you're looking at all that kind of stuff and you're thinking god man this is so dark this is so dire this is such a bad mood you know this is such a good mood killer in that respect so weirdly this news about afghanistan that again is so far it's so kind of foreign to us it's so kind of far from our reality is somewhat comforting because it simply just distracts you from the daily scourge and the misery and the pain and the loss that covid has inflicted over the last few years and i for one am grateful i really am and it's crazy to say but again it goes back to the contrast that i've been mentioning a few times over the last few weeks the contrast of the life that we're living nowadays is pretty funny if you try and find the humor in it the fact that some of us myself included are going to nightclubs dancing away our you know dancing away the blues um you know shocking out under a disco ball or you know dark or dimly light room you know standing outside of a toilet cubicle for the 17th time in one night to go and use the toilet and yet you know some of our other global citizens or global brothers and sisters from around the globe are suffering or around the globe our global brothers and sisters are really suffering in 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 kind of unspeakable ways 
whilst we're there you know just laying around and having a good time one of the places that actually is a great vibe killer if you really want to get yourself um if you really want to question your life decisions when you're on a night out try and go to the um, what's it called there's a narco subreddit i forgot the name of it but there's a subreddit on yeah there's a subreddit um about narco culture essentially you know trialing or essentially kind of um compiling loads of footage um from you know narco gangs obviously in south america you know but mostly in central america mexico and whatnot and it's a real vibe killer if you really want to have an idea of where your party drugs and whatever are coming from and the people who are supplying that stuff and then shipping it over and the misery and pain that they live under and uh you know this is the horror that some of the citizens have to basically experience on a daily basis you know on their walk to work and stuff definitely check out that narco subreddit it's absolutely wild but um again those that's the contrast we're living in some of us and like remember early on there was this time when everyone was hating people that were rich because they were able to basically escape covid and basically you know not abide by the rules because they had the money to afford it which is basically the truth i don't think i've seen a single person who's posted a video of themselves on a private jet that's had to wear a face mask i don't think i've seen one so far don't get me wrong most of the most likely if you're somebody with the means necessary or you have the financial ability to travel the world you're probably not going to let yourself you know be limited to where you can go by not getting a vaccine you're just going to get it just so you can allow yourself to go and party so that maybe is the reason but i so far have never seen from all the pictures and videos of people online whether it's influencers rappers you know whoever else it may be um you know girls about town socialites whatever i've not seen one person wearing a mask and that obviously is the reality of the situation if you're rich if you have money if you have fame or whatnot you can avoid the rules and i remember that was a big thing early on people hating that class of people and then little by little we got to the point where regular people on the street could also do that could also kind of tap out of society tap out of what's going on in regular scheduled life and kind of um create a little mini utopia for themselves wherever they happen to land in the world and people have obviously have been doing it now because you know all you need to do essentially is make sure you can afford the ptr test on either side of your journey and you're basically golden you can go wherever you want really just to a certain extent um, and most places, especially if you're going to places that are heavily relying on tourism, are really happy and, you know, um, willing to welcome you because they haven't had any, you know, extra business come through because, you know, of course, the world's been on pause. So I don't know, man. It's, it's a weird place to be, like, mentally, but I have to be honest, I am quite, uh, you know, I am quite um, happy to not to see constant coverage wall to wall of the horrors of COVID. And again, it's sad because to exchange the horrors of COVID from our newsreel, we had to exchange it with the, you know, terrible situation that's going on in Afghanistan. So it's like a weird, I wouldn't even call it a Faustian bargain, but it's a weird deal we've had to make with the devil in that respect. But hey, we are where we are. What can we do? And thoughts and feelings go out to those folks, innit? Thoughts and feelings go out to those folks. Anyway, got a jam packed show for you to get into today. Loads of things to talk about, loads of interesting topics and whatnot. So make sure you grab yourself a drink or a little snack and let's dive on deep. That's good. Number one. Is this story courtesy of BBC News? It says a University of Leeds students offer 10k of free housing to defer. I've always been, as much as I've tried to avoid the kind of brass, the brass tax, or whatever, what's that term called? Yeah, but since I tried to, you know, ignore the minutiae of COVID and what's happening because I feel like that news too dour and is way too negative and kind of ends up putting you in a funky mood. It is still interesting to keep an eye on all the other bits and pieces of society, um, various sectors of business that have been affected um by covid in really weird indirect or sometimes direct ways and how then and kind of thinking about how then that could maybe affect you later on down the line in the things that you do just so you can anticipate the blows um the disappointments the delays and things in you kind of doing the thing that you need to do i think that's really important because you know you can't anticipate what's going to go wrong but i think you can sort of condition yourself toughen yourself exterior wise mentally physically physiology whatever it may be so that when those disappointments and those setbacks do come along because they will because we're living under covid it's all uncertain you won't be as um thrown off as probably somebody else would have if who was kind of burying their head their head in the sand completely so this is a good indication of it this just says university of leeds students offer 10k and free housing to defer 
So students wanting to study law or business at the University of Leeds are being offered £10,000 in cash and free accommodation to defer their courses. Um, if you know anything about universities in the UK, I'd imagine in most kind of Western countries, these guys don't even, you know, let alone, they don't even give you a pencil for free in uni. So the fact that these guys are willing to give you £10,000 in cash and openly say you can defer and come next year means that they're down really, really bad right because they don't you know they don't give away anything for free tuition fees you know there was a period in time where they were arguing that tuition fees will be in a certain range between i forgot what it was six thousand nine thousand is the range that universities can charge and you know when the terms then kind of came around and it was time to go to universities basically 90 percent of places um bumped up their tuition fees to the highest amount which is nine thousand i think just under 10 right they weren't mucking around so the fact that they want to offer this amount of money means that there's definitely some um this is one of the kind of knock-on effects of covid so it continues the deputy vice councillor peter jimak said the university was uh, making the offer as some courses were full so he said the nature of the teaching assessed grades as opposed to exam based grades had made it harder to predict the number of successful applicants so you know with everybody missing out maybe last year or people deferring their entries from last year in order to work or in order to stay at home and now the world reopening you can just imagine the flood of people who have tried to sign up for the new term um you know it's just there's not enough spaces most likely right to kind of fulfill the demand so they're willing to give you money in order to defer your entry because they still want you to come next year of course professor jimenek told bbc we've contacted students on a small number of programs in two schools to let them know that what we're going to make them an offer and to defer next year with the incentive of cash payment of about ten thousand enough and our fee for their halls and residence the first year being paid by the university which is brilliant we're not putting pressure on anybody to make the choice it's an entirely free choice he said any student who choose to defer until 2022 would be provided with the online materials to help them prepare for their arrival next year who's, who's going to be studying you have to be a real geek to defer your university for uh, until the next year and then spend that entire year studying you have to be another level of a dog i can never do that you know if i'm going to defer my flipping you know uh, education i'm going to do it so then i can do things that are completely alien to conventional education whether it's going to volunteer traveling the world wherever it may be i'm not going to spend my time reading that's insane i'll wait for that i'll wait to start doing that next year it says yeah he added that the university was also creating an extra 30 spaces to study medicine for students who were unable to get a place at universities which were oversubscribed a record number of students have applied to study medicine this autumn a rise of t more than 20 percent of last year the number of spaces places sorry for medicine in england is capped by the government professor jimenek said we recognize that there is a national need and we know at the last 18 months how important doctors and nurses are we are stepping up and making available some additional places that we will make available for students from oversubscribed universities to come study with us at leeds so on paper it's a good idea defer your entry get some cash you know whatever the only caveat i would say is that deferring your entry in a covid in a post-covid world doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do because i would really advise against making long-term plans in general because you just don't know how quickly the world can change there's no guarantee that the plan that you've set forth you know you've penciled down for october or november is going to go ahead the way you want it to look at just look what's happened in new zealand and australia a couple of cases of covid and suddenly the whole country's locked down again which is obviously negative going to affect people's ability to move travel and do whatever they need to do so there's just no you know there's no rhyme or reason why you'd kind of you know try and plan out so far ahead and also even if you were going to defer your entry like i said the whole point of deferring your entry and taking a gap year would be so you can go and travel and go and see the world and learn new things and maybe go and volunteer or whatever it may be and you can't really do that now right there's no real possibility of doing it in the same way you would have done it in 2019 or 2018 right the freedom of movement isn't the same the places you're going to are maybe that real down real real bad is the vibe going to be right that's one thing i've noticed in general the vibes have been off everywhere i'd imagine the vibes will be off in places you know i know erasmus is over but those kind of foreign exchange sort of like you know um ngo programmy type things are they the same as they were prior are people maybe pulling all their resources to 
COVID, especially in third world countries. I'd imagine they're trying to, you know, again, make sure most of their citizens and countrymen and countrywomen are basically staying alive during that time. Are they going to care about some kid from Western Europe coming over with a backpack trying to, you know, find themselves? I don't really know. So it's not really the best decision to go ahead and do. Um, you probably would be better off just, you know, trying to go to another university because, again, part of, I think, you know, the revelation with COVID is that it doesn't really matter where you go or what you do. You know, it just matters that you do something that you love in general. So it doesn't really matter if you go to Leeds or somewhere else that isn't maybe as well respected. The fact that you can go and study in the first place is probably the most important thing, especially after spending so much time doing courses online or just, you know, basically not doing anything. So if that was me, I wouldn't defer my entry. I'd just go and seek another university because, you know, there's no real point in, you know, planning so far ahead considering everything that's been going on. But maybe that's just me. Um, then we've got this, which is an interesting bit of news. This is courtesy of BBC. It says, Weight Watchers shares dive as people put diets on hold, which doesn't necessarily make much sense to me because I know a lot of people, myself included, had put on a couple of pounds during COVID and lockdowns because you're stuck in indoors, ordering Uber Eats and not really moving too much and all the gyms were closed because most governments thought it was smart to prevent people from going outdoors, prevent people from socializing outdoors in general, preventing people from, you know, not wearing a mask and then also telling them that they couldn't work out which is bizarre and if i'm not mistaken the timeline in the uk bars and restaurants opened prior yeah opened way before gyms did which is ludicrous but hey but you would imagine now that the world's reopened people are slowly but surely wanting to go back out again and sort of like you know shed their covid skin you know blossom like a butterfly in some ways and maybe try and get fit and healthy again you'd imagine so because the, the gym that i go to is a basic leisure center is really rammed from like the morning until the afternoon it's wall to wall people in there so it is really seems a bit strange to me but i guess it might be more of an american thing but let's continue the article it says shares in the um, Weight Watchers International Formula One Weight Watchers um, have dived 25% after the firm said people were putting diets on hold after lockdown. The weight loss firm, which is backed by talk show, talk show host Oprah Winfrey, had 4.9 subscribers in the June from about 5 million last year. Boss Minda Grossman said part of this was a seasonal effect, but she also said that people are less worried about what they eat as they venture out in their homes again. Is that true? I don't think so. I think that's excuses for fat people. Um, this is while people are acknowledging their need to recon, uh, recommitting to weight loss and wellness our recent consumer research shows that at the moment they're also asking um, for a pause to enjoy social reconnection you can do both things right you can meet up your friends and maybe go on elliptical a couple of times a week you know what i mean like this evil old lifestyle is really bizarre with both traffic and search under pressure this um or well, traffic and search under pressure this sentiment uh has sh sh sentiment shifts appears to be across the weight watches and wellness category like other dieting companies weight watches international benefited during the current pandemic as consumers stuck at home decided to get back into shape not necessarily true many people put on weight as they stopped commuting to work and increasingly turned to food and alcohol to manage stress but that's the thing it doesn't mention that the gyms were closed it's not really the fact that people are at home i think if gyms would have remained open for like covid people would have been okay to go because it would have gave you something to get out of the house for right the fact that they were all closed and we couldn't go anywhere but supermarkets and the only things that we could do was order on off amazon and you know uber eats and deliveroo and just eating all this stuff made people balloon so you'd imagine with the world reopening you'd want to lose them weight so you look amazing when you go out but maybe it's just me it continues, it says, however, in the three months of the 30th of June, subscribers' numbers fell or were flat in all its key markets, including North America, interesting, the UK, where I am, and the rest of Europe, sales of its brand products six, slipped 6.9%. So maybe they're right. Maybe that is true, but I'll be, I'll be interested to really drum down on the numbers and find out exactly what type of people are basically being put off from going on diets due to COVID. Is it because... They've just realized that there are more important things in their life than being skinny, which is understandable. If they realize that they maybe enjoy the fact that they're able to go out and eat carefree with their friends and family and no one really cares what they look like, maybe. Um, I don't know. Maybe they just want to go out and just get fat in general. I don't know. It's just, it just sounds interesting, though, in general, because you'd imagine 
it's a bit counter it's a bit counterintuitive because the fact that you can do Weight Watchers at home and the fact that you don't have the distractions of going to work because you know I'd imagine a lot of people fall off the wagon and those kind of things going to work you know um, Friday drinks Thursday drinks going birthday parties and stuff and then suddenly your points are racking up but when you're at home you can kind of manage it a little bit easier you would hope so but again maybe I'm wrong there but again one of the weird kind of knock-on effects of being indoors all day with COVID and it at least these weird things and then lastly I wanted to kind of knock on effects of covid we've got this news courtesy of bbc for all those chicken lovers out there you're probably gonna be crying 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 into your hands right now um nando shuts restaurants as it runs short of supplies um nando says it will lend some of his staff to its suppliers to help get things moving in the supply chain after shortages hit to shops the restaurants group has said has had to shut around 50 outlets temporarily after uh, apparently running short of a staple fare, Perry Perry Chicken. Customers were quick to react online complaining about the local closures. It says, yeah, the, um, some will quote, the UK supply chain is, is a bit of a mare right now. Nando's tweeted, this is having a knock on effect of some of our restaurants across England and Wales. Um, obviously, you got a tweet there. Why you're not delivering? The chain said that delivery schedules um, meant that the situation was changing rapidly and suggested customers check the website before they visit. Imagine having to imagine having to imagine having to navigate to Nando's website to check if they're open to to get your fix of chicken. And maybe I'm in the minority here, but I've always said, not always said, as of recent, because of the introduction of all these kind of smaller, independent y kind of knockoff Nando's that exist in most ends in London, I think it's one of the grossly overrated restaurants in the uk in general it's one of the most grossly overrated chains i know you know most of it has to do with the ambiance and the fact that you kind of get left alone you can bring big groups of people and really get loud and noisy and shit and some places have really good playlists so you can have a bit of a dance on your table get smashed on a few bits of alcohol and then go off to other locations because most of the, again most of the locations are in good places where you can go to clubs and other spots and whatnot but in terms of food in terms of providing you with roasted chicken it's not that great it really isn't most times you go there you're having to flip and douse the chicken in copious amounts of sauce to make it somewhat edible or tasty which again isn't really evidence of really good produce the fact that you know usually if the chicken's good and you know it's been barbecued well you can just sprinkle a bit of salt and pepper in it and it should taste amazing the fact that you have to douse it in all the sauces that they give you um to get it you know to a level that would make it you know somewhat tasty shows you everything you need to know again maybe you can't complain because it's flipping five quid for the most part so you can't really expect artisanal chicken but i think the hype around it is just way way overboard it really is it's fucking bizarre especially again when you consider that most play people that live in ends have a kind of knockoff version of, of nando's that does really good pay pro chicken and then usually you can form a better relationship with the person that owns it they can figure out a way that you like to get made get it made particularly i don't know it just makes it's just odd i just find this whole infatuation of it really really bizarre do you remember there was a time when people were obsessing over people that had like black cars to go to any that meant that they could eat for free it's like just imagine being the loser that number one goes on the website to check nando's and see if it's open so you can order and number two the loser that has a flipping black card and then there's black card in their wallet that they pull out at the end of dates or when they're taking out their friends and says don't worry i've got it it's like jog on you cunt let's continue um, it says um, food and other supply chains across the UK have struggled to operate normally this summer due to what has been dubbed as a pandemic. Staff being required to self-isolate if they have to come in contact with people with coronavirus. Okay. Um, Dairy giant Arla said, to, said it had to cut back on milk deliveries to supermarkets due to lorry driver shortages this month, leaving some supermarket shelves short on stock. And I bet some of those people that they would get the ping to work in this area are so glad to get the day off because or a couple of days off because they, they might have come in contact with covid it must be one of the most infuriating times if you're a manager or owner of these companies but also if you're an employee you must be yes when your phone vibrates it's the last week um, rival food chain um of rival food ch chicken store kfc said some items were missing from its menus due to a disruption the problem has also affected car makers transport operators restaurants and pubs road haulage firms have been affected sorry have been um particularly pinch point uh, because the industry has already short of qualified drivers from this week 
fully vaccinated staff no longer have to self-isolate a rule change in the government hopes or ease the pressure on businesses running short on staff so again last week to enjoy your days off my friends at the same time nando says is exploring alternative solution to offering its staff to help suppliers like what's your alternative solution are they gonna smuggle in all the afghani refugees and tell them to work in these places like these companies man although it didn't say whether it had accepted the offer or what they would do to be or what they were working on the south african chain a famous for its peri peri sauce operates more than 400 restaurants across the uk and then they said the shortages were not affecting any other outlets in northern england island or republic of ireland so another kind of reminder that you know if things are going bad for you during covid maybe just you know zoom out from your own kind of personal misery and look at it from a bird's eye point of view you know it's negatively affecting so many different people in loads of different sectors businesses chains you know mum and pop stores you know startups they've all been affected negatively in some way shape or form and the knock-on effect is nowadays kind of reaching the customer it's not just kind of stopping at this sort of um produce side of things when it comes to the company i mean we're feeling it whether you know price increases or our favorite items not being available on a menu so don't be too hard on yourself if you do feel like you're going through it at the moment because it feels like everybody around the world is going through it and hopefully just hold on as long as you can and you can come out of it on the other side the same way you know more likely than not in a couple of weeks you'll probably be able to get your pay pay chicken you know half glass empty or half class four half class four that's what i mean yeah that's what I mean. anyway moving on next on the list we've got this news courtesy of united report on twitter regarding phil jones and i'm confused i'm confused just as a united fan short you know i'll talk on this briefly because i know how much people on here hate me talking about football but hey you know what it's my thing i do what i want so phil jones if you're not familiar um is a player at united a defender who's been at the club for more than 10 years has been absolutely ravaged with injury ravaged with ill form or poor form and generally um throughout his entire tenure has never really been fancy to the first team sort of center back for Man united and the fact that he was one of sir ferguson's last signings at united before he retired and he built him as the essentially the next was it was the next brian hughes or Mark, who did he say he was he, he he named him after some legend right phil jones basically saying that hey we're going to pin our hopes on this guy and he's going to be the one to basically stay at this club for more than 10 years and go down as one of the you know most important players be a captain bloody blah, blah 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 it never really worked out for him and you would imagine a club like united and the fact that this guy is on you know a high wage weekly wage i'd say phil jones is i would estimate he's probably on about anywhere between 70 to 120 thousand pound per week he recently signed a new contract i think in 2018 which is insane and if i'm not mistaken the last time he actually kicked a ball for united was in the 1921 season so more than two years he hasn't kicked a ball for manchester united and if we go to his actual stats here available on the premier league um website it says here, of course, you know, 1920, as I mentioned, the last two appearances he had, only two. And he hasn't played again. You know, he didn't play a, in, in, he didn't play a single game last year. And this year, he probably won't play as well, considering that we signed Rafa Varane. You know, we still have Eric Bailly. We still have Lindelof. It just doesn't seem likely that he's going to get any game time, really. And, you know, I think in the entirety of his time at United, I think that's what, 10 plus years, let's say, right? Let's say 12. I don't know. Let's say ballpark 12. If I'm looking at this correctly, numbers wise, maybe no, let's say the last five seasons, right? Let's not make it a lot entire time. Let's say the last five seasons, he's played a total, especially let's go from the nineteen twenty, maybe a total of like sixty two matches over five seasons, which is ridiculous considering that there's already thirty plus games in the league alone, not including all the league not including all the cup competitions you know a club like United are gonna be in. The fact that he can only muster sixty plus games across five years is disgusting and shows maybe that you know he's not at the level needed he's true injury prone whatever it may be the solution or the conclusion should be that he should be sold or at best his contract should be terminated but for whatever reason there doesn't seem to be any clamor for him his contract to be terminated or for him just to be completely iced out from the team because like i said center back is one of the most hotly contested positions we have at the club we had to loan out Axel Twanzebi to Aston Villa because we couldn't promise him any game time so I don't really see how suddenly Phil Jones can fill that void because he's never fit or when he does play he gets injured straight away it's just bizarre and I don't really understand why United don't just seem to be able to terminate 
players' contracts. I know for the most part, it's not something that a lot of clubs like to do because if you buy a player, it's just an asset. Even if it's depreciating in value, you would prefer to get some kind of liquid cash out of that player so you can maybe reinvest it into transfers or reinvest it into the club, whatever it may be, or pay debts, who cares? So I understand why most clubs don't want to you know, terminate the contracts of players because they would rather get a transfer fee. But there are some occasions where you just can't come to a conclusion that works best. There's no real offers because the player doesn't play in Phil Jones. So clubs can't, you know, you don't blame the clubs for not meeting our valuation because they haven't seen evidence of him playing to a level that that valuation would justify. So, and then obviously we, we keep on doing this weird thing at United where whenever a player's contract runs down to the last couple of years, we always automatically extend it. We never let people's contracts run down. Instead, we just sell people. It's just it's just a bizarre way of doing stuff. No contracts get run down. Everyone gets an automatic year or a couple of years extension, regardless of how poor they are, or regardless of how, um, of how, um, you know, of of like the lack of matches they play or game time they get from the managers in question. It just doesn't make any sense. And it seems like for all the trouble or for all the kind of stick someone like an Umtiti is getting now at Barcelona, he's obviously, if you've not heard the news, um, Umtiti is a left back for Barcelona who at the moment is currently refusing all transfer requests and loan requests that are coming through for Barca because they don't match up to his taste. And now Barcelona are kind of looking at the details in the T's and the I's, reading all the terms and trying to find out via Spanish employment law if they can basically fire Umtiti and only give him two months, I think, pay or something like that, right? That's what they're trying to do. And usually it's a last step in a club. They don't usually like to do those kind of things, but if you're not being pro uh, cooperative and you know you're just turning up for training and you, you don't care that you're being embarrassed because you've been trained you've been shit of your number and you've been asked to play with the reserves and the fact that you keep turning out moves they basically do those kind of things in the hope that they'll put you in a corner get you upset enough that you just want to accept anything to leave or you just leave off your own accord which then kind of prevents which then kind of alleviates them financially in terms of paying out your entire contract so there's a lot of stick his way in Umtiti, but you don't hear the same level of stick being pointed towards Phil Jones, who is essentially doing the same thing. If a blight a little bit quieter, right? The fact that he's refusing to leave, he's not pushing to go. Obviously, maybe you know, a lot of clubs are in for him point blank, but you've never really heard Phil Jones come out and say he wants to restart his career himself outside of May United and maybe get back to playing football regularly and doing what he loves and maybe trying to get back into the team. We don't really hear anything like that from him. If anything, you just keep hearing about my dad. And I think I mentioned on Twitter, but the writing was on the wall when there was a tweet that came out earlier that basically insinuated or suggested, I'm not sure if it's true, it could just be a rumour, but it was suggested that Rafael Varane wanted a number four at United, which obviously Phil Jones occupies a number four jersey, and he basically refused to give it up to Rafael Varane because, like the tweet says here, Phil Jones is keen to rebuild his Man United career. Solskjaer plans to use him as one of the five centre-backs this season. He'll be staying at United for the 21-22 season. It's just like, I don't know. I don't get it. Like, he's never played. He hasn't played football in, like, the, what, last two years, really, apart from two games, supposedly. He's always injury-prone. He's, you know, he's got... You know how they say a player has a mistake in them? He doesn't have a mistake. He has mistakes in him. Um, he's just not cut for it and it's no shame to just be like you know what we know we paid a lot of money for the kid when he came up and he clearly had potential to be a world beater but it just didn't work out just kind of you know it is what it is wash your hands of it and keep the guy moving but for whatever reason we don't seem to want to do that and now we're basically stuck with a player who we basically can't shift because allegedly he's on really high money for the level of player he is and no club wants to take that risk in offsetting his salary only for him to play a couple of games and then get injured again it just doesn't make any financial sense but you know what can you do what can you do oh this coffee's nice next on this we've got this random news this is courtesy of jack harlow's instagram page and it's a random one that i kind of spotted on my um haunts around the social media space and basically he made this caption or post 
where he basically spoke about um, his decision to go sober and kind of abstain from alcohol. I think he mentions that he doesn't really smoke weed too much, so he's gone, you know, he's not doing the LA um, sobriety thing where you just cut out alcohol and drugs, but you smoke loads of weed, which is bizarre because weed's drugs, but hey, whatever, we digress. And the fact that weed will mostly make you get munchies, which then makes you have a higher ticket sugar, which is also very addictive, but you know what? We'll forget it, we move on. But it is interesting to see um, you know essentially pop stars or rappers or whatever it may be of his level and at his notes stage of notoriety deciding at such a young age to be like you know what i'm gonna abstain from alcohol because i feel like it doesn't necessarily lend to me creating great music for me able to be able to perform or just basically be, put my best foot forward and it's quite admirable and i think it's nice to see people like jack harlow doing such a thing sending a positive message out to his fans but then on the other side as well it's not even about positive message it's just nice to see people have kids especially have different kind of role models quote unquote if that's a way to say they really shouldn't be role models but people you can look up to who approach um being young and doing what the hell you want and being rich and famous in a different way so if you want to see the person that's happy to get wasted and you know look like they're on shrooms every day and dabbing and doing these drugs came in cocaine whatever maybe you can find those guys but it's also refreshing to know that you can find guys as well who are basically deciding to live this quote-unquote sober lifestyle in an effort to basically create better music and better moments that you could obviously enjoy when you go out there and see these guys perform so the caption itself reads as follows it says i haven't had a sip of alcohol in 2021 going the rest of the year without it maybe i'll never take another sip who knows my favorite vice was definitely drinking i don't like to smoke but if i learned anything this year it's that i don't need it i don't usually say a lot in my captions because it feels like not anything is worth telling y'all should um anything that's worth telling y'all i should just put in my songs but today felt like a good time for a life update i'm really grateful for how we've come and what i know you appreciate all of you and i want you to know that i appreciate all of you but i'm hungrier right now than i've ever been i'm prepared to become a well-oiled machine to take this shit to the next level see you soon and i think anyone that's been involved in the entertainment industry nightlife industry who's whatever been around and about you know for the most part the guys that are really performing at the highest level and churning out you know project after project performing day after day for the most part live a fairly mediocre boring run-of-the-mill lifestyle right where they basically go and perform they eat some food to their family and friends they go to sleep and they just do the thing the same thing again the next day this idea that you know people can live the whole like lemmy lifestyle and you know be drinking and doing hot drugs every day and partying and smashing hookers is usually the exception for the majority of people in order to really perform at your highest level you need to have a clean body mind and soul and all that malarkey and the best way to do it is to really start with alcohol because i found that especially in the older i've got I don't really enjoy alcohol as much as I did when I was younger because I think in the back of my head I know how bad the hangovers are and there's nothing like a alcohol a, a hangover to basically make you question your life decisions um, and basically make you question <laughs> everything in general um, and also you realize the older you get that the hangovers are just not worth it right there's no man in my experience because it's strange I find with alcohol usually there's a point where you get a really good buzz like Bert Crash would say right there's a point where you get a really good buzz you feel a little bit perky you can have a little bit of a boogie you got a spring in your step right and you're not slurring your words you're just a bit jovial but then unfortunately there are there is there comes a point where you just start chasing the dragon and you want to keep getting to that high when you're never going to get to it the real smart decision would be to just stop when you get a little buzz on but most people don't they try and top it up they try and find it again and then slowly but surely you end up in a spiral and little by little you blacked out and you're in the back of a uber somewhere in the middle of Pimiclo. do you know what i mean those things can happen very very quickly so usually i found that hangovers aren't really worth it you know the going out doing that kind of stuff but then i've also found the order i've got that i actually enjoy i don't i don't enjoy i don't mind being out and about with people who are clearly off their nut when i'm sober i don't really mind it too tough because i like being out and about i like hearing songs in you know really loud on big speakers i like to you know maybe have a little bit of a dance and whatever it may be and just feel the vibe of a scene that i'm going to go and partake in and just be there in person 
Um, but I also don't need to be as wasted as I was prior to enjoy myself. So it's a really weird double-edged sword. But like I said, for somebody as young as him to take this decision, especially in the infancy of his career where you should be freaking out and doing all sorts of nonsense, the fact that he wants to do this shows that he's really taking his art seriously. And I think if you're a Jack Harlow fan, you should only be proud of him. You should also be super excited because you know you're probably going to get some of his best work, you would assume. Because, you know, again, the stuff, the kind of content he makes isn't necessarily, doesn't, I would say the kind of music he makes doesn't, doesn't necessarily rely on him having to be crazily smashed in order to make a hit record he can still make a hit record and have stuff to say without you know being you know um severely intoxicated so i'm rooting for the kid again not my favorite guy i kind of liked him a lot when i saw him perform was that lala blues or rolling loud he did a live set and he was a really good performer had one of the rare sort of like rappers who didn't perform with a vocal backing track which instantly gets my respect the music necessarily isn't for me but i still like him as a person so i'm rooting for jack harlow and hopefully he continues on that journey <laughs> Next, we've got this brief news here, courtesy of Twitter and Joe Pampliano, um, basically breaking down how much of a big deal Messi is. It says here, Messi will be paid an annual salary of 41 million euros at PSG. But in the first 24 hours of his arrival, the club has already sold 832,000 jerseys, bringing in a total of 145 million in revenue. Um, the club keeps around 10%, so that's 10.5 million in profit on the first day already right without even batting an eyelid and you'd imagine the beauty of having a player like a Messi or any you know high level player is that even after they leave you can still keep selling their jerseys right people are still going to want to have their souvenir of Messi's first season at PSG Messi's second season Messi's final season whatever it may be you're still going to want to have that sort of um, um, you know flipping memorabilia in your wardrobe so that's one of the beauties of signing one of the best players in the world it kind of pays for itself in that regard so um you know big cash money i'm still awaiting his debut which i think is going to come this weekend i think in um league i'm pretty sure i'm not too pretty sure not too sure but keep your eyes peeled for that but yeah now you know why clubs like psg decide to shell out such a high amount even though they sign it for free but you know still paying him a high amount in terms of contract because they can get that money back in a year very very easily then you think about all the tours that are going to the club the club tours are going to increase off the back of his signing and whatnot and the attendance is just you know the money in the bank is just astronomical it truly truly is then we got this really interesting story courtesy of Fox Business. Um, I think we've all kind of suffered the scourge when you go to McDonald's and you want to order a McFlurry and for whatever reason, the McFlurry machine is always broken. In your UK, for the most part, whenever the McFlurry machine has been broken, whenever I've tried to order a McFlurry, it's usually come during you know the after hours you know really late at night when i'm kind of coming back from a club somewhere and i want to get um you know some shitty food down my esophagus and usually i found that that's when those kind of you know machines aren't working and the common sort of urban myth around that time was that usually because it's late at night and they're kind of operating with a skeleton staff in mcdonald's maybe you know any time between like 12 a.m and 6 a.m there's not a lot of people they're working they want to make sure that they can you know be um, efficient somewhat they usually turn off stuff like the coffee machine and the mcfly machine in order to focus on just kind of you know making the burgers or making the fries which makes sense but that was what you'd always get told but this story courtesy of fox business maybe sheds a different light on the situation going on with the mcfly machines and maybe there's something more sinister at play so it says here mcdonald's ice cream machines company is served with a straining order report a judge has awarded um, a temporary restraining order against taylor company the company that makes mcdonald's corp ice cream machines according to reports the first reported by vice's motherboard the order was granted by Kitch inc a startup that made the diagnostic tools to help solve issues with the machines filed a lawsuit against taylor in may customers have complained including on social media that the machines known for making mcflurry's popular mcflurry dessert um, were often broken Lawsuits alleged that Taylor had purposely designed a flaw code that caused the machines to malfunction to profit from the machine repairs. Now, where do you think you heard that before? 
Apple, right? Apple supposedly were, well, it was alleged that Apple would do that on purpose when it comes to the updates. That's why they basically forced everybody to update because they'd purposely, you know, working some code or whatever it may be that would make your phone operate slower or whatever it may be. So it would, number one, either push you to get to update your OS or it would push you to then go and update your phone. So, you know, all in all, Apple wins in that regard. So now they're alleging that this company that makes these machines purposely you know, worked in a error or a code um, error, a coding error that would basically result in them having to send their repair guys out there all the time to fix them. And you'd imagine every time they get called to repair the machine, that's money that's kind of get take, being taken out essentially out of that McDonald's tail point. If there's one thing we know about McDonald's, they don't like to give anybody any money. So it continues, says additionally, it claims that Taylor had repeatedly and under uh, multiple aliases and email addresses tried to purchase kitchen solution device in order to learn trade secrets. Crazy. The court documents said that Taylor's spokesperson eventually admitted that it was successful in obtaining one. Um, Taylor, according to the documents, had also begun to develop his own version of the kitchen system, makes sense, with help with McDonald's franchises and defiant, and defenders, sorry, um, Tyler Gamble who kicked your kids of working for Taylor this is crazy Sam Tensi Taylor told McDonald's and McDonald's told franchises that kitsch machines were dangerous and that they could according to the end of April report when wide um, cause serious human injury these guys are going crazy these guys did a really efficient job by frightening off effective job by frightening off all customers investors so we're hoping the public will support our case in the name of justice um, right to repair and humanity says kitsch co-founder Jeremy O'Sullivan told Vice okay he's got to calm down um he says we still have some this uh, diehard customers sticking with us though um few in the comparison to what we once had before mcdonald's and taylor called our product dangerous so what are people when i say customers do they mean like other mcdonald's franchises or do they mean you know regular citizens are going to buy these fryer machines and installing them in their home i'm sure someone's done that right i'm sure somebody like richie rich styles installed a mcflurry machine system whatever or maybe integrated into their fridge i'm sure someone's done it but that's insane it says the outlet reported that taylor had a just 24 hours to turn over his kit solution devices and not use copy or disclose otherwise make available in any information including formula pattern compilation program device method technique or process obtained by any of them the fox business reached out to Bob McDonald's Taylor but did not immediately receive a response so some real skullduggery going on with that machine which again makes sense because you know for all the theories that we had like I mentioned before the urban myth about you know they just close them because the staff are under what those locations might be under staff it doesn't make any sense because if there's one thing that would probably i would assume generate a high profit per cup would be mcflurries right just imagine what the cost value is for you know whatever the ice cream is that they use um the toppings that they use the syrup it's just in the pennies and they sell these things for what a pound a pound 50 uh, maybe 99 for the little quarter cup it's you're still making money hand over fist so these places need to be selling them at the mcflurries they're not in a position whether they can afford to not sell them so um i guess that theory can get really dismissed out of bounds but yeah now you know what's happening with the mcflurries now you know um What's going on here? Okay, let's take this off. Next on the list, we have your courtesy news of Rolling Stone. A podcast I listen to called How Long Gone plus a full tour. They've got a full tour coming up, right? Signs a deal with indie label Jaguar Jaguar. Is it Jag Jaguar, whatever that name is? I guess that's an indie label. Um, host Chris Black and St Jason Stewart will release a debut album of interviews later this year, which is weird to release an album full of interviews, but we continue. It says, How Long Gone, the cultural interview podcast hosted by Chris Black and Jason Stewart has announced a North American tour and a deal with indie label. The How Long Gone Trek will kick off in October 1st at the Earl in Atlanta and wrap up on November the 9th in Chicago. The live show will be adopting, I'll get this pop up out of the way, fed up of you. We'll be adopting a, a David Letterman style night late, uh, late night model, sorry, the with Black and Stewart opening each show with a monologue, then conducting a guest interview and welcoming a different musical guests. Among the acts confirmed for the tour are going to be Rebounder, Iman Claw, Countess, um, Country Western and Bad Moods. You know, these are probably some of the most whitest bands I've ever heard mentioned in the history of the world. Um, tickets on tour will go on Friday, August 6th at 10am local time. Not going to get Nas on there. 
are they? They're both hate now, so that'll be interesting to get now. Um, the, the, the Alan Gunn released a debut album of interviews via the label this fall, an official release date of the tickets tracklist will yet to be announced. It's interesting though, isn't it, right? You got a podcast and you're signed to an indie label and you're going to be putting out an album full of interviews. Are they going to have little kind of skits in between? Is there going to be, you know, bonus tracks from the bands that they feature that go on tour with? I don't know, man. People like Twin Shadow that have appeared a couple of times on their podcast, he needs all the help that he can get because that guy was so... That first album by Twin Shadow was maybe his magnus opus and then ever since then it's just been... It's been a tough, man. It's been tough. But yeah, regardless, big up these guys. I listened to the show. Um, it's a fairly difficult listen. i got to be honest. It took me a while to get into it because, you know, especially Chris Black, he's a very... Uh, it made me think about it the other day. He's an incredibly unlikable character. That kind of old, snarky, you know, um, consistently... Or, no, or you know, um, diehard sort of contrarian thing that he has going on is just drives me up the wall. But I guess, you know, him being a writer and being somewhat of a cultural critic in that regard is maybe why he does that. And again, it's a stick that you can kind of lean into and kind of carve a pretty successful media career out of. But it did make me think... When it comes to creating any kind of content online, meet whatever it may be, it might be. I've noticed that it's quite important to be somewhat divisive. You know, obviously, um, the other dude, Jason Stewart, is a far more, I guess, likable character. But I guess if they both had the same personality, maybe the podcast wouldn't be as popular. The fact that Chris Black can legitimately hates everything, doesn't really talk about stuff that he enjoys too often, spends more time critiquing things that don't really need to be critiqued, or just you know nonsense opinions like nods isn't good or he makes boring music which is demonstrably not true those two king diseases so far have been stellar probably one of you know hands down some of the best albums i've released in the last few years especially when it comes to hip-hop you're just looking at it, scratch your head thinking do you actually believe the stuff you're saying but then i think to myself part of the reason why they're successful is because you know they're fairly unlikable characters i think you kind of have to have that you kind of have to have people that really fuck with you and people that clearly hate your guts and want to see you burn and lose everything you need that in order to be successful on the internet it's really strange but you do i look at somebody this is a poor example because you can't really compare those guys to her but i look at someone like a trisha paytas and tanamogo right these kind of people on youtube um, Ethan Klein even is a good example right like demonstrably unlikable people right you can see why people would not like them as personalities you know how they act and whatnot even Philip DeFranco all these people but they're really successful because they have just amount, just as many people if not more who fuck with them heavy and are going to follow their show buy their merch support them on Patreon all this sort of good stuff so that's what you basically need to be a success out there I guess in the podcast content landscape even even Red Scare you know there's a lot of people that like, this is Red Scare especially on the subreddit who basically hate Anna and Dasha but they tune in, tune in every week so I guess that's kind of part and parcel of why they're so successful so I don't know it's interesting um marry up a podcast you know basically being signed to an indie music label going on tour with other bands who i don't really i'm not really that familiar with because you know they're mostly caucasian bands that you'd hear play at a lobby of the ace hotel or something not really in my kind of vibe but the fact that they're doing it is cool it's nice um hopefully their shows go well um live podcasts for the most part i've not really ever been a fan of i've been to a couple and they're a bit boring to watch but i like the idea that they're doing these sort of like monologues and then into Injecting it with bands playing and whatnot and maybe some games yuck i don't know if that's true but regardless the the, the the kind of you know the layout and the programming or whatever of the show sounds interesting um and they're obviously going on a bit of a tour from october 1st all the way to november 9th you know boom 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 all over the place in america so hopefully they sell out all these locations and do well because like i said i enjoyed the show it took me a while to start enjoying it um because you know like i said chris black is really unlikable as a person but once you get past his little unlikable traits you can sometimes find some gems and some good interviews and good discussions that you can basically learn things off of some big up how long gone and hopefully all the shows sell out um next on the list <coughs> what else do we have here should we move on from there 
boom 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 yeah, let's go from here let's go straight to the close so it's this is courtesy of hypesa says rtx pushes technical boundaries with a system a capsule right um it looks like the recent years there's been a concerted push i'm not sure if it's just me that's noticing it but i'm seeing a lot of these brands that wouldn't necessarily say they would cater to the quote unquote urban brand urban crowd deciding now to plaster loads of black boy front and center and most of their kind of advertising uh, material whatever it may be and in the hopes of basically attracting that new youth market into their dying brand and Arturex is probably a good example of it even though they're a heritage brand even though they're a brand a lot of people respect in terms of garnering the attention of the kids there's no better way than basically reflecting the kids that you want to sell to in the press shots and marketing material you're using but it does feel a little bit intentional in my respect it does feel a little bit that like they're pandering but you know you gotta do what you gotta do so it says here they've got capsule A let's read the text it says um, Arturex is built on this recent collaborative release alongside Japan label Beams by unveiling a system a capsule a gender inclusive I don't even know what that means um, collection of a technical apparel designed for a range of mounting activities from the Arturex stuff that I've got most of the stuff especially the older stuff that I bought most of it second hand um, the sizing varies widely right anywhere between an XL and a double XL still fits me it's really strange so this whole idea about gender inscrutivity is strange because most of the colors are quite, I guess, uh, middle of the road and boring in terms of, you know, dark slates and, you know, really dark reds and browns and blacks. So there's not a lot of things that will tell you that, oh, it's only made for men. It's fairly gender neutral. And the women's stuff that they do have is fairly run of the mill too in terms of creating that sort of mountain wear stuff or outdoor wear for people in various genders but i don't understand this whole like inclusive thing it's a strange thing to say but i guess maybe something just to sell your items this is maintaining a signature design detail system a serves up innovative garments that can be worn day to day as well as challenging environments as Arterix looks to expand this community to welcome new audience of outdoor enthusiasts through adventure driven climb inspired places what does pieces what does that even mean system a also this is the blurb system a also so also system a allows us to push the boundaries of how technical gear can look in the mounting setting says taka kusag artrix equipment creative director it said it was con concept con sorry concepted to bring um a new expression into the brand and into the outdoors all designs feature artrix pinnacle uh construction package in an involved evolved new form i don't even know what all these words mean gobbledygook but let's look at the clothes themselves um as per usual you know standard great arterics where they've even decided to do a capsule collection and have t-shirts with this sort of like overlooking contrasting thing on the outside it's kind of look like they've been flipped oh no i thought it's an overlock stitch it's not it's actually kind of like the piping on the inside it's basically been put on the outside which looks fairly cool i like the logo you know kids like big big bold logos on the back of their things you know standard sort of like streetwear skateboarding um approach of stuff so that makes complete sense i love this sort of tracksuit thing that they have here that the girl's wearing or i guess it's a girl so i guess that's where the gender neutral thing comes in so i understand maybe they're approaching that way in terms of using colors um more brighter sort of uh poppy colors that they could then be adapted and using silhouettes are a bit more forgiving and not so you know slender when it comes to the women and maybe too boxy when it comes to the dude something in between the backpack looks fairly decent as well um again you know mountaineering wear does it what are the shoes he's got on there? the shoes look hard i don't know what the shoes are but this outfit is banging isn't it nice good details over there of course everything tape seamed everything's waterproof wind resistant i'm assuming and probably going to cost you an absolute arm and a leg but it does look fantastic but then the only strange thing is this this tweet i saw the other day from a kid called jeremy carl and i guess he's maybe involved in the design of it let's hover over his name what does he do he doesn't say he just said blood oath but he says here as one of my sorry as one of very few black designers in the outdoor space which is weird is there a thing about lack of representation in outdoor space in outdoor wear in mountaineering in general that you'd need to say something like this black designers like what uh it's a it's a niche of a niche of a niche right um outdoor mountain wear like goth um, goth ninja sort of clothing it only you know attracts a certain kind of consumer the price point is extremely high 
there's not a lot of places that stock it right it's just like I didn't think there was a black and white issue there. I just assumed it was just an expensive issue, right? It's like a VisVim. What well, are you going to say? VisVim isn't necessarily catering towards the urban environment because they, I don't know, they don't make clothes for niggas. I don't know. It just sounds like a strange sentence to say, but, you know, everyone's got to have their stick. It continues, it says, um, I'm an extra shield, my bags. Tomorrow, the first collection, the the by the experts artists releasing the fits I made for everyone the pants are baggy too so I guess he's one of the people involved in designing it and maybe he did the bag or whatnot but I think overall as a lineup of clothing it looks pretty decent I think it's a good um, attempt at kind of garnering the attention of the young millennial maybe even younger than that crowd who are trying to get into outdoor wear and maybe are progressing away from doing the whole North Face thing and want to get into something a little bit more um real something a little bit higher brow you know something a little bit more bespoke dare i say higher price point higher quality more you know whatever it may be and this is probably a good way to do it you know a, a nice lineup of items here uh the jacket of course i guess that's a jacket the kid is wearing but it also comes in black i'm assuming you've got the trousers the shorts i'm not featured on here and then you've got the no i guess that might be the jacket that he wore with the, with the child so i think that might be it maybe that's it yeah because it looks like the pocket looks kind of similar here so that jacket comes in white and black so do the pants i'm assuming and then you got this top that comes with the yellow shorts and you got this rain mac that looks brilliant and of course the um the long sleeve shirt and the t-shirt with the kind of piping on the outside and the kind of one strap bag so system make clothing by our tricks looks fairly sick i'm not gonna lie um where did they say the release date was let's go back to original article on hype beast it said it's dropping august 11th so it should be available now if you've got the coins go out and buy if you haven't cry into your pillow no one cares no one cares next on the list we've got a quick update here courtesy of stussy they released some great imagery because um to showcase some of their new eyewear pieces for summer which you know it's a bit late summer's gone but still in terms of imagery and in terms of execution stussy are just up there might be i've mentioned a few times on social this is might be one of the greatest turns around when it comes to a modern um you know behemoth of a streetwear brand kind of going from being quite irrelevant and slowly but surely kind of feeling like they're going down the oh what, what was that called they're kind of you feel like they're going down the maharishi route right maharishi's had like many false dawns where you thought they were going to come back and they just flattered to deceive and stussy has somehow been able to completely turn their their massive tanker engine of heritage around and basically reinvent themselves and garnered the intention of everybody in a scene it feels like i see loads of people wearing so see not just the younger kids coming up like it's kind of reinvent it's kind of reinvigorated people who maybe had learned about stussy through you know goldie starring in some of those old adverts back in the day have now been reinvigorated to come back and start purchasing stuff again so big up them for just doing a good job and um yeah making summer glasses look fairly cool that you'd want to wear them you know great use of models great pictures and um, great execution in the shapes and stuff and easy nice stuff to wear and then if that wasn't any better they finally decided to release the lookbook for their 421 collection and again the four collections are just amazing maybe i would say overall especially in the last few years for the level of consistency and for the amount of stuff that i want to buy the stuff that i would kind of put into my basket and think about for a, uh, an ignorant period of time stushi definitely has been the far more consistent brand out of like maybe a supreme i definitely if i was still into wearing this sort of garb on a daily basis i'd definitely rather spend my money on stuff like stussy and maybe patsa to a certain extent than going to buy stuff from supreme because they just i don't know they smash out of the park so this is their full 2021 collection you've got the women's down here and the men let's continue here and see some of the pieces um you've got this amazing i don't even know what that is that's that super cozy um it that looks like a pile sort of fluffy hoodie with straps with stripes that's quite similar to this kind of alpaca -y kind of um hoodie that i bought in mexico city a couple of years ago it's kind of their interpretation of it it looks amazing if you want to get your little drake on and do the little cute e-girl pose in your mirror that definitely is one of them great combat pants again 
Um, they've got these kind of, um, I'm going to say these are ACGs. I'm going to say they're mocks as well, if I'm not mistaken. It's a collaboration. I guess they've got this sort of like um, uh, moccasin slipper that they've got going on here that, I've, if I'm not mistaken, is probably an ACG. But again, a good indication of, you know, Stussy's ability to just dive into the Nike archive and pull out some old shoes that you'd never really cared about anymore. And they basically reinvented them or breathe some new life into them and now suddenly all the kids are going to give a shit about them once again just a brilliant again to see this top as well is fairly nice and those kind of what are those uh what are those corduroy pants right they are yeah nice corduroy pants just subtly done that kind of classic vintage logo with the crest um on there you got the trapper sort of country hat there she's wearing Great flannel shirts are always pretty good. Knit hoods. Look at that sweatshirt with the dices. Like just simple, well executed stuff that you can easily wear. The shoes are those Dr. Martin collaborations, I'm assuming, right? Look like Dr. Martin's collaborations. Made in England, I'm assuming, probably too. Again, expertly done. Really tasteful. Volume, pleat your trousers. They're going to be very, very popular. I'd assume this entire outfit is probably going to sell out in record time. That's for sure. You've got um, classic work shirts and work jackets, similar to what Carhartt would do in terms of denim. Not for me personally, because you have to pair. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to wear a pair. I'd have to wear a pair of Red Wings and grow a massive beard to, in order to make stuff like this work. And I'm just not willing to look like um, a guy that used to go to what's that shop self edge and post on sufu in order to wear that sort of stuff i'm just not gonna do it <laughs> but yeah again nice tops those um nike collaboration cloggy sort of acg things i spoke about are back in attention like i'm not really a fan of wearing clog slippers or anything that's got a non -sh back strap but these look really good these look really nice again they remind me of the nike air mocks a little bit that kind of potato-y sack upper oh look at these mountain boots i wonder if they're a club as well those what are those crinkly trousers crinkle pants crinkle shirt as well very isi miyaki-esque got this whole nice patchwork flannel shirt going on again got the cozy um woodsy blanket stitch fleece like oh just terrific all around man just so 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 good you really can't deny how good most of the stuff is. Very Jeremira quiet esque. Oh, look at that jacket. I'm just coming to it. That hat is amazing, isn't it? But this outfit, oh, look at that. What is that? You've got the striped down puffer jacket, which reminds me a little bit of a jacket that Balenciaga did, a white, no, a flannel. They did that had like the stripey print on it that I would die for, but unfortunately sold out in various places. I think it might be Balenciaga. It was Balenciaga. It wasn't Vesemar. It was definitely Balenciaga. It might have been four into 17. Um, but this looks amazing with that grey hoodie underneath and the boots. Oh, ho, ho. don't piss me off. Continue again. Some nice women's stuff. The cardigans are fairly nice. I'm sure they're going to be popular. Look at that fleece vest. Those boots are banging. Are they? Are they? Mar is that a Morel collaboration? You think? Is it Morel? What's that brand? It's not Morel. It's a Salinger. It's a brand that makes mountain boots. I forgot the name of them, but those boots look banging. Like waffle knits cardig more cardigans if you're gonna get your tyler creator asap nast on that's you know probably don't wear this around asap nast he'll probably fight you if he sees you wearing a a sweater vest or a, you know a sweater what's that is that a cardigan vest right yeah. um whatever but yeah look how good this stuff is from stussy that jacket as well color box sweater over over dyed this is true and the, the, those volumes those pleated voluminous pants are going to be very popular man if you want to get your if you want to get your kind of east london boy on right and you want to pop down to um what's that what's that magazine shop in shoreditch everyone goes to with the white bag and the blue logo you want to pop down there get yourself a drink at dragon bar and do a bit of people watching with your fixie back to the side this is definitely the vibe in it so 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 bloody good and then scrolling down says here clean construction demonstrates familiarity and confidence clothing as an avenue so what is this mostly the construction type stuff it looks very maybe because um he's monopolized that market but it looks very heron preston-esque in it which is odd because heron preston obviously got a lot of his inspiration from actual you know real I guess service wear garb or whatnot that he basically reinterpreted in his way but now whoever does that kind of ends up looking like him it's interesting but that, that jacket is banging that wash canvas shop jacket is really really nice 
they seem like they make good combats too we go with the vest again you got a suit here with the s logo and the hat you got a nice sort of harrington jacket esque you got a nice flannel those jeans look bad those double knee jeans are awesome those boots are look really terrific just all in all great collection even the choice of models man they just look so cool don't they just amazing i love everything about it but oof, that's the coziest look at that what the hell is that jacket that sherpa shirt that's gonna be popular this reminds me of the old school this reminds me of something that um what, what, what they call it again oh, i forgot the name of the brand but this reminds me of a uk brand that would have done something similar i forgot the name what's the name doesn't matter but regardless this is really popular this is this is going to be popular another one i think it's going to do very very well super super cozy wear again if you want to get your drake on and do that little cute e-girl pose in the mirror this is definitely the stuff that you need to get so yeah big up stucy full 2021 lookbook looks amazing so many stuff that i would purchase in a heartbeat again like i said one of the standout brands out there at the moment definitely doing some consistent great work and it's good to see them doing it continue on then we've got a small update courtesy of fucking awesome unfortunately it looks like the entire lookbook got taken off of hypebeats for some reason i'm assuming jason they'll put in a call he wasn't happy maybe with the final results or whatnot or maybe the items weren't necessarily released because when i checked the website it wasn't really available to purchase but the full win uh 21 collection is basically having teased i uploaded a couple pictures on my instagram that i'm gonna go through of stuff that i obviously liked jason deal obviously somebody that i've kind of looked up to style wise and as a skater for a long time i still remember one of my one of these standout videos for me because there's a dvd that me and my brother used, used to watch consistently and we basically to the point where it basically scratched and used to skip certain bits or used to return back to the beginning or sometimes wouldn't work was the dvs skate more part i think it's like three minutes not that long um it's him basically fucking around um dressed in you know million different outfits i'm assuming that some of the footage was basically filmed over a few years because it takes him so long to do tricks and he's kind of on the, moves to the beat of his own drum and that video man oh if ever there's a way to fall in love with the guy and then of course later on you read his interviews you watch his interviews super captivating dude super interesting guy and um i like the story of fucking awesome the fact that he started this really early on during his kind of skateboarding career and kind of got friendly with the people at supreme started his own brand he got support from those guys in order to, what to do and then it got too much for him and he just kind of binned it right and put it on ice for the most part and then later down the years when he kind of i think i forgot the guy um uh the guy that skates in vans um something van yorgan i forgot van something when they linked up and they decided to basically relaunch the brand again and kind of give it another go many years down the line it just i don't know it kind of added to the legitimacy of the brand that he would put on ice for so long even though he was really popular he was very well known for his style you could have easily cashed out and you know made hundreds of millions of dollars i'm assuming from all those years but decided to kind of stay true to himself decide to put on ice went to it ready and then when he launched it when he was ready he then decided to go really unconventional sign loads of you know skaters that not a lot of people have heard of kind of pin his hopes on people that he kind of really fucked with heavy and now the team is really solid the clothes are amazing and they just do things really differently from all the other brands out there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I like what they do personally, a lot of it. And, you know, some highlights, of course, um, what would you call those bowling shirts, Hawaiian shirts, whatever the shirts everyone loves to wear now with the nice prints on them. You've got this amazing varsity jacket that I obviously love, love the look of. I'm not sure where the picture of the photo was taken from. I would say maybe it's from a march in Selma or something maybe it's a video screen grab from woodstock i'm not too sure but i love love the print on it itself of course he's then wearing his adidas collabs that i unfortunately was unable to purchase and then the last image which is the most interesting one for me is this weird sort of crinkle finish coach jacket that comes in silver that makes it look like a national jacket it reminds me of an old babe jacket i had back in the day that was a puffer that was completely silver um so i love this kind of um, application or i love this how this has been executed in terms of a coach again coaches are a staple in a streetwear wardrobe so it's cool to see him doing his interpretation of that as well again it's unfortunate you can't see the entire lookbook because he took it completely down but i'm assuming 
you know, they're going to change some things around. Maybe wasn't happy with the final product, but this coach jacket in silver is banging. I'll definitely be all over it. I think it comes in black too, if I'm not mistaken, or a kind of a darker, greener color, which is obviously really nice as well. But then, you know, those standout pieces, the other one, the Rylon, is it Rylon or whatever you call those shirts? And the Varsity check is definitely going to be popular as well. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. And hopefully we'll get an update as to when we can see those items in stores and be able to touch them with our own hands what else do we want to talk about here oh yeah it's interesting courtesy of dover street market london interesting news regarding supreme it seems like supreme from fall winter 21 onwards will now be stocked at what was it what locations was it i think it was la london and tokyo i'm assuming when it comes to dover street market which is interesting i'm not too sure if this is a in, reflection on the fact that there's been a drop in foot traffic in most retail stores i'd imagine especially in 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 the uk and you would think that even though supreme you know make really covetable items and people run and rush there to go buy them and they all kind of you know they basically get they basically strip the shelves dry there is still a large proportion of people who basically would assume are tourists who basically come over to places like London in the hopes of purchasing stuff with Supreme and they basically end up buying up whatever's left over. So if the residents of the UK, people who live here, who are basically based here, go and buy all the hype stuff, all the other stuff that the foreigners don't buy or do buy when they're over here isn't being purchased by people from here then who's going to purchase it you know what i mean you're going to need to get rid of that quote unquote dead stock so maybe this is their way of doing so by maybe mixing up the offerings and maybe changing it up and maybe offering a few more of the stuff that they would sell in store to foreigners and put them in dover street because of dover street market it attracts people from all over the world to go and shop there because of the multitude of the brands and the, the 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 name itself bloody blah 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 maybe that's the approach or it just signifies you know another sort of indication of how other businesses have been negatively affected by covid just in general it might not be a supreme appeal thing it might just be it's just a covid knock-on effect people are not around they need to increase the eyes and the hands and the foot traffic that people encounter with their brand and end up selling stuff they're making more stuff than ever before now they've got more stores i'm not too sure what the idea is behind it but it is interesting to see obviously there's a link there, there's a connection i'm assuming and adrian joff and all those guys that are part of dover street are very familiar with the people that own supreme james jebby and whatnot so there's definitely a personal relationship that might be explaining what this this kind of marriage is but it does seem weird a brand that's supreme that's very kind of protective about who, who and where their items are being able to be sold is going to basically decide to have a permanent kind of residency within Dover Street Market stores. I know before they've done little collaborations and pop-ups and special occasion items usually get sold sometimes in Dover Street but this is like a long-term thing now going forward. I wonder what that's about. I wonder what that's about. Then to kind of continue on the Supreme news, Supreme released the full 21 preview and lookbook. You know, most people, like myself included, were super excited. So I'm going to go through a couple of the pieces that I love. Normally, you know, this is standard fare when it comes to Supreme. It's definitely the stronger, it's definitely stronger in the winter. I feel like the spring summer stuff is okay, but you can probably give that a miss. There's not many, there's not a lot of stuff that most, there's not a lot of stuff I'd assume a lot of streetwear people will really be into when it comes to the spring. But it also is a good opportunity for you to get something, right? Because winter usually is a stuff that's most covetable. But if you actually want to purchase something, in store you've got a higher chance of getting stuff based on it being spring summer than it being winter because the winter stuff is just too hard and everyone's a fan of it um stuff that i liked immediately off the bat that i was really impressed by that i would gladly 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 go and purchase was this featherweight down jacket that kind of reminded me of this old uniqlo jacket that i had prior um similar kind of styling behind it and this comes in purple the only thing that i don't like about it is the massive branding on the sleeves but this is something that you have to just kind of get over if you want to buy modern day supreme they love the branding now the kids love the branding if you want the jacket you have to have the branding it is what it is the gore-tex um 700 down field jackets are really nice um this standout piece def definitely um this is the nas dmx um jacket with the print with the screen grab kind of taken from the film belly if i'm not mistaken um all over print like really really well done it's definitely an indication or kind of highlighting just how far 
kind of Supreme's in-house production of being able to make these sort of like tape themed waterproof water resilient jackets have gotten to I think in years gone by they would have done this as a collaboration with North Face but they're bringing a lot of that stuff in-house now and basically designing these jackets from the ground up right um which is great to see so that is obviously a standout and of course the jacket next to it is warp hoodie in the pink as flipping flames um and then of course you've got this jacket here that might reminds me of like a head portal one with all the pockets all over it um you've got this one too featuring the artwork of christopher wall with spray paint all over it cheetah print half zip that was pretty decent you've got a jacket like this i think which which features the stash um artwork on the back which reminds me of a jacket i have at the moment um which I'm, i forgot who it's made by but it was released in the early 90s kind of you know a quintessential sort of japanese um streetwear kind of rain jacket -y thing with the camo right it's a quintessential thing that you would kind of see people featured in the sort of urahara um late night early 90s late 90s or sort of tokyo based um streetwear magazine so that's definitely something that i'd keep my eye on in that regard you can miss me with all the ny motif jackets and whatnot there's nothing more cringe than seeing somebody lives in london with a jacket like that right it's just it's, it's kind of it's kind of sad it's kind of similar to people that wear you know aston martin flipping merch and they go on the bus it's like eh. then of course this jacket as well is really cool um similar to 700 down i just don't like the logos i can pass with all of that but again overall in terms of appeal the knits the shirts um they've got this sort of amazing kind of cholo-esque shirt too with the short sleeve and the thermal underneath these cardigans are going to go crazy the kids love cardigans tyler's probably going to wear a couple nas probably going to wear a couple then they're going to start arguing again online can't wait for that um, you've got this great cycling jacket with skittles some awesome awesome stuff all around man really really great stuff um let's take quickly take a look at the lookbook so we can see how all this stuff looks on person on the models we have a Da, 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 da. yeah this, this looks, just all looks great man you can't really say it doesn't in it it's all always well done greatly done the jackets are always awesome very tasteful yeah that kind of that jacket there with all the pockets all over it is banging but again just that logo in it all these logos on the side are just too much Gore-Tex as well but it's just too many too many prints I just don't want so much branding but it's an age thing I guess over time you just get over the fact that you know you don't want everyone to keep knowing what you're wearing yeah that's the logo at the back of that camera jacket it's basically a stoosh a stash sorry um font on the back of stash original artwork let's say yeah and that's the jacket that one in purple it looks banging doesn't it really really good man you can't deny it again now it's on the front with the contact lens is like oof that jacket is going to be flying off the shelf. It's definitely going to be something that a lot of people are going to try and purchase. Some some successfully, some not so successfully. Let's see Wagwan when everything drops. But yeah, Supreme Pool Winner 21 collection is out now for all your... Oh, no, out now. It's going to be out this Thursday, the first few items. So definitely check that out if you're that way inclined. More likely you aren't going to get them. But, you know, you could always try. You could always try. Um, Yeah. That might be it, you know. Excellent Singing Show, episode number 485. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company, as per usual. If it's the first time checking out the show, make sure you smash the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Peace.